What's going on, everybody? This is your channel. <laughs> oh, okay, God. Girl. So, you can give the uh, intro. You're so used to doing the podcast now. Look at you. And, like, my videos that I do. Like, You're a I moderator do, now. Look at you. Thing. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Vicky, and this is my husband Cameron. We are doing our annual marriage Q and A. We do this every year. Okay, I don't think we missed a year yet, so we're on a roll. Uh, this is our eighth one. The fact that we've done eight of these now is ridiculous. Isn't that crazy? I don't know why. Wow. The difference between eight and seven is like so much. Cause I was like, oh, this is our seventh one last year. But like this year, it's our eighth time talking about our marriage. It's our eighth year that we've completed. We're moving into our ninth. Our anniversary was last week. So yes, we're a week in to year nine. If you have been here for the past eight years, welcome to season nine. I mean, at this point, you probably know everything there is to know about us. Um, so we're not gonna do like the basic, you know, how did we meet kind of question. You know what I mean? Like the the surface level questions. We're past that, especially if you I watch the other other videos. Yes, especially if you are a podcast subscriber. If you have subscribed to Everything Is We, shout out to you, We Fam. Um, you guys have pretty much heard every single thing we've been through at this point. Um. So, a lot of this won't be that new to you, but we'll be recapping. For those of you who don't watch the podcast, we'll be recapping the year. So, we're just going to talk about 2021, and if you're not caught up, you don't know anything about us, you don't know our story, we got playlists on playlists on playlists on playlists, and that will all be linked in the card section up here somewhere, and that way you guys can get caught up from the wedding video all the way till now. Getting that out of the way with formalities, we're going to get started. Um, I have questions that I wanted to ask Cam and myself. <laughs> and then we also have questions from the viewers, from the Instagram fam. The first one is, describe year eight in one word. Describe year eight in year eight one word. In one word. Different. Even though 2020 was like the beginning of the pandemic, like... 2021 the entire year was a pandemic so it was it was different trying to maneuver like date nights and and travel because we traveled a lot but, yeah we but did we travel. still like it was just like the way we would normally travel it was just different uh covid test and just yeah all of that crazy stuff and yeah it was just different like it was we kind of shook the table for our marriage <laughs> if you want to say it like that like we did a lot of things different last year like we started a lot of new journeys if that's what you feel yeah sure <laughs> we traveled a lot so we went to a lot of new places and experienced a lot of new things because we you know did a lot of new traveling started the podcast is that your word did, are you because are, are you piggybacking up or is that i mean word? no but I don't, I, okay, so my word, I guess my yeah, word you, would be, you, you in this whole my thing. word would be, she. I don't know, adventurous? I don't have a word. That was your word, adventurous. I, Boom. Yeah, and new. you have it. New. That's we'll it. Do that. New. That's it, that's all. New things. Like, so like that. So the next question is, goals we accomplished in 2021. I'll go first. I feel like um, at the beginning of the year, we said we were just going to do things and not like, think super hard about it and just start doing stuff and I feel like we did that pretty well as far as like just going for it you know what I mean like just going for it I think that's one of the things I'm really proud that we did last year so I'm really proud of us for starting the podcast and being as consistent as we could be <laughs> despite all of our travels it's always a goal for me to travel every year like I just I like traveling so but we literally traveled every single month last year, except, well, no, I thought we didn't go October. somewhere in, like, August or something. October. Cam left his job, which we talked about oh, yeah. on I, the podcast. I that I did. Yeah, you left your whole job <laughs> and okay. joined the team. Okay, yeah, we did. Okay, so so to go back and stand in agreement. Because <laughs> he forgot everything that happened. I got to right, remind she, you. Yeah, I was like, what is she talking about? We're talking about, about 2021, babe. 2021. <laughs> Bro. 
You gotta go back and look at some pics to remember. It was all a blur. You left that your feels, job. It feels like it feels like so long ago. We did music together. Remember, we made the song for everything. Yeah, we made for the, the music. everything, everything is we, we and the Life of the Logan song. So that was our first time doing music together, which was fun. Yeah, I forged not a, a lot of new relationships. So yeah, so to yeah. your word, like it was new and it was different. Yeah, it was like because it was new. It had to, because it was different. You cheated <laughs> because you what? used you used what I said, and then you just. Like different and new are like kind of no, like they're this. not different they're and new same, are different. New like is same. starting something new. Different is just different from what we've been doing. Those okay. are two different. That's words. okay. That's two okay. That ain't a problem. We went on our first paid vacation, like our first paid trip. That was cool. That's true. That was a goal of mine to do like travel blogger things, and we did that. What else? That was really fun. It was. Like I want to do it again. Yeah, it was great. Like I like like I. I want to go back to Colorado. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. That was the first time going to Colorado. As far as our marriage and stuff goes, I think we accomplished a lot of things that we said we wanted to accomplish. Our Chipotle order is here. I feel like as far as like us getting ready to move out of this house and like you going through the process for all of that, like renovating and stuff like that, we started. We started. We had the floors done. That was a huge accomplishment in itself, just to get the floors, <laughs> just to get the floors done. So, um... I feel like as far as goals go, yeah, we did some great things last year. Pause. It wouldn't be a marriage q and if Cam didn't get up and walk away from the camera. You thought I was about to leave my food out here? No, but any other goals? What goals did you have last year? I don't even remember. I don't even remember what happened last year. You don't year. write your goals down. So I don't remember. You know. Goals down? Babe, when people ask you about goals, you'd be like, I don't have goals, guys. No. So now you try to sit here and ask me about goals. I don't remember. It's okay. It's fine. People be asking me about long-term goals. What do you want to do in five years? Girl, I don't know. That's that's different than what do you want to do this year? I have things I wrote down. I added it throughout the year, and then by the end of the year, I had stuff that I was trying to do. Um. Oh, we paid the Jeep off. Yep. We said we wanted to do that. And you quit your job. Yeah, that's, that was the main thing. My list wasn't that long. One of her goals was for me to leave my job. No, it was a goal for you too. You wanted to you wanted to retire by thirty. You said that. Five days five before I turn thirty one. Five seconds on the shot clock. Is that is that right? Look at I was like <laughs> I, I was like actually shot. Is that right? Is that <laughs> one week before his birthday left his job. Um hardest moments or most challenging moments of twenty twenty one. It was similar to 2020 in that a lot of people were passing. Um, so I lost a lot of family members. My grandpa dying was probably the hardest moment for me. I think that was the first time I like really, like I'd lost somebody that close. Like it's family tree wise. I feel like that was probably the first time you had to be a part of that process. So when things happen like that, are very pivotal moments for our marriage, you know what I mean? Because we usually don't see each other in that way. Um, so similar to how I had to be there for Cam when his grandmother passed, he had to be there for me when my grandfather passed. Not only that, but just like dealing with the transition of our family not having my grandpa there and then like my grandma and stuff, just checking on my mom and my grandma and feeling sad for her and... You know, it was a rough year for her. So, you know, that, that kind of stuff is always hard. Um, but I will say, I really appreciate Cam because I feel like those kind of moments are the moments where he steps up and, like, just really shows how important he is to my family and, like, like just how well he handles, like, being there for people, you know, because he's just a very good person. It just was nice to see him step up in that way, um, to be there for my family. Like he sang at the funeral and like anything they needed. Like he was just like, whatever y'all need me to do. Um, so yeah, even though it was a hard moment, I feel like personally, it was a very, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? It kind of- It's like a shift. It was, and I feel like I handled it really well. I was able to, I gave a speech at the funeral. Like I've never spoken at a funeral before. I, they had me speak for the family basically as the oldest granddaughter, grandchild, the oldest grandchild. I knew he was gonna pass 
in January. I saw it in a dream. And then my mom told me he was sick. And then we were like on edge for a couple months. Because even when we went to Malibu, I was worried about going. That's why we didn't go out of the country. Because I was like, I'm scared to leave because I don't know if it's gonna happen while we're gone. So like we went to Malibu and then the freaking snowstorm hit Texas while we were there, remember that? And I was worried about them because he was on hospice at the house, April hit. And then they, my dad was like, yeah, you should probably come down. So we flew down on a Saturday. We flew to Texas to see him. And that was my last time seeing him. Flew back that same night, went to church. A Couple days later, he passed. Then the next morning, we flew to Puerto Rico. Sunday, we flew back to Dallas to go to the funeral. It was a lot, that was, that was a lot. I'm appreciative of Cam because he really was very, very supportive. It's weird, I don't even wanna keep talking about it because I, I might start crying, but. Yeah, so 2019, I sang at my grandma's funeral. Yeah. 2020, I did one of my youth's funeral. And then 2021, I sang at her grandfather's funeral. And funerals are just tough, yeah. bro. Like The hard times always make me love you more. It's just always a reason. It just, I always be like, wow, like, Cause that's when you, I just love you. That's the importance of marriage. It's like, not when everything is going well. Like, oh, I just love him. Like, we be going on vacations, but like, yeah, my G, like, what's, what's how, good? You, how you feel what's like good? When, when everything ain't sweet? Yes. But I even, like, I realized how well you, like, just fit because I thought I was thinking about, like, man, like, my grandpa really loved Cam and, like, they had the same middle name and the same birthday and, like, y'all's personalities are similar i'm just like it's just a lot of things that were like started clicking for me in my head like wow i just really love him you had the same middle name yes floyd james and the same birthday so it's not like i don't think people can be replaced but i feel like it, there's god no way puts, that, god puts certain people in your life for a reason yes so, that's that's really all that can be said about that everything honestly. happens on purpose everything happens on purpose Did, hardest moment for you all right that's it that was a tough time. Like, anytime you cry, it's weird because you don't cry. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can talk about another moment where you, like, freaked out. but Oh, that... I did have a panic attack. Well, we're not going to talk about why. Because <laughs> I don't want to get into it. And I'm just I'm I not get into that, it, but... I'm not saying that for us to go into it. I, I didn't know what to do. I was just... That was a hard moment. That's all whatever. we can really say. Yeah. This is a hard moment. Favorite trip of the year. Favorite trip. That's not fair. Okay, I have categories for favorites. <laughs> First, number one memorable would be Colorado. Just because it was so different from any other trip we'd ever been on. One, because it was a sponsored trip, so we were working. But also because it was different. Like, we had never been hiking in the mountains before. We'd never been to the mountains. You know what I mean? Um, it was a together. different- Together. I've been to together. the mountains. But it was a different terrain. And I've been hiking. You've never been to Colorado mountains? The Rocky Mountains? No, you went to the Mission Strips. I've been on Mission Strips, girl. Well, that don't count. Okay, so <laughs> oh, together. That counts more than <laughs> the little cute stuff we did for five minutes. So we, we did Colorado. That was really fun. Um, we hiked in the mountains. And it was just a really, that trip was like, I don't know. I don't know what it was about that trip. I just really had fun. We had a lot of fun on that trip. That was a fun trip. It was like. You just never know. Cooler version of where we live. Yeah, it was it was With interesting. Mountains. Anywhere that I can be next to the ocean or mountains, I automatically love it. Colorado was one of the most unique, cool experiences. But like if you if we gonna say like a favorite, Cabo. Like anytime we go to Cabo, <laughs> like I'm just it's Cabo, bro. Number two would be Cabo. Three. Jamaica was really fun Jamaica too. Jamaica was fun. Because that was that was a very different experience for me because one, we didn't know none of them people that we was going going down a trip with. We Except only knew, Bryce and Bree. Yeah, Bryce and Bree. But we didn't we stayed in a house with two other couples we've never met before. They ended up being super cool. We all friends now. That was a dope trip. And I didn't expect no disrespect to Jamaica people. But I didn't expect to really like Jamaica that much because I'm not a Caribbean person. I prefer like deserts and Mexico. Um, but Jamaica was really nice. Yeah, those are my top. Malibu was cool too though. We met Kevin, Melissa. Malibu was cool. Malibu was cool. That was different. It was a different part of LA that I hadn't really experienced before, so that was nice. Like Malibu makes me like actually love California. We went to Nashville. That was a fun trip. That was different saying, like, because we did a conference with you know like what I'm other with our, with our closest friends. Yeah, with other like leaders. Favorite memory for me, it would be the day Cam left his job. That was like the best day ever for me. I was so happy for him. I would agree. Same for me. Like that day was like, were you shaking? 
Were you scared? Nah, my heart was beating out my chest. Yeah, that was a good day though. Biggest lesson we learned in 2021. Everybody's not gonna understand your faith move. That was it for me. Like everybody's not gonna be okay with it. It's not gonna make sense to everybody because everybody's path is different. Yeah. So like, and that's and that's okay. Like mm -hmm. sometimes people be wanting like, no, you gotta do it the way I do it. Like bro, like I, I literally can't. You wanna know why? Because in your generation, y'all didn't have the internet, y'all didn't have cell phones, y'all didn't have electric vehicles. Like it's like the way we do things is just literally gonna be different just based on the time in which we were born. So yeah, I ain't gonna preach, but yeah, that's all. I think last year I learned that I have feelings. <laughs> I learned that I have feelings every year. Like I have different feelings about things that I don't know I have feelings about until they come out. I, I dealt with a lot of different emotions regarding people that I didn't know I had. Like when people pass, you don't realize how much you care about them until they're gone. But then you also don't realize how much other people mean to you until somebody passes. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of thing. It's like you realize who's there for you and you realize who you really care about and who matters most. And I think I learned a lot about where people fit in my life. Not to say I cut people off, because I, I didn't cut anybody off. But it's just I learned what relationships meant to me in a different way there was a lot of relationship shifting last year oh and i also learned how strong i am because you guys guess what i opened up a lot last year too i talked about like my uterus for the first time that was the first time i ever told the world about my uterus <laughs> not my uterus but you know what i mean i feel like i i'm really proud of myself for even doing that because i didn't think i was ever gonna do it it was a big moment for us big moment for us because we, I feel like a lot of people, like we helped a lot of people talking about that. We did. And it, I think it opened up your eyes to, you didn't realize how much of an impact it would have been on the men. You know what I mean? So like, I think it kind of helped you to see like how other people were feeling too. Yeah, that's valid. Something new you learned about each other this year. So for the first seven years of our marriage, Vicky would say this out loud and she would kind of act on it that she's not a super feely, emotional type person. And for the most part, that was true. Except for, I'm not even gonna say last year, I'm gonna say- It's been a progression. No, yeah, for the last Since 2020, 13 I think, months. I think 2020. Vicky has changed in that aspect tremendously. And I even was talking to her mom and dad because I was like, I ain't never seen her act like this before. <laughs> it's, I call it my second wave of puberty is really what is happening right now. I uh, didn't think I would be this emotional, but I am very emotional. And it's only really with Cam. I mean, I don't really be like that in front of other people like that. Mostly like just my family and Cam. My family has seen a lot for me too lately. They're like, who is this? <laughs> Something new I learned about Cam. I learned that, I mean, it's not necessarily new. It's just, I'm getting a refresher on a lot of things. I kind of already knew about Cam, but it's like, now it's live and in person. Um, since we've been working together, um, I'm learning a lot about how he works and how he operates. I'm learning a lot about what frustrates him and, um, and like what he's really, I guess, what he's passionate about. I'll say passionate. I don't know, like things that you really care about, things that you really love. And um, I guess I'm just learning a lot about how much you care about those things and that I need to like be more sensitive to your creative process. Us working together, it stresses me out um, because he doesn't work like me. And I'm so used to being in the house by myself. Actually, it's it's escalating now because we have another employee here with us. Um, and so I hate working with people. So this, but I love these people. So I can't be mean <laughs> because I have to actually dwell with you. Um, so the bossiness, I'll be trying to conceal it, but I, I I'm not good with working with people, especially when I've been doing something for so long and I want you to be as good as me or do it the way that I do it, if that makes sense. No, you want us to do it the way you do it. Yes, and that if it's not done the way I like it, it frustrates me because it, I want it to look a certain way or I want things to be a certain way. And 
it's not that way when other people do it. And that frustrates me. But I can't be the only one, and I know that. So working with other people is a struggle for me. Um, so I'm trying to, I'm learning more about how to be a better coworker. So I'm learning what kind of, what kind of coworker Cam is. <laughs> how he she, al she also doesn't, we're both learning how to communicate effectively. We're, we're learning how to communicate other. is really, yes, yes. Because sometimes there can be double standards anyways. Okay, well that answers that question. How has the transition from Cam's corporate job been for their relationship? I feel like it actually hasn't hurt our marriage. I mean, I don't think anything, it doesn't make me not like him or it doesn't make our relationship harder or anything like that. I think it's just a different aspect of our relationship that we that we're working on. But I don't think it makes it harder per se. It doesn't make it harder for me to love him. You know what I mean? Like This is weird because not only are we husband and wife, not only do we live together, but we we own a business mm -hmm. and we we are always with each other. Yeah, we spend a lot of time together. And so then when I need a breather and I leave, I'm not even gone for very long. And then she's like, oh, you where are you back? going? Where are you coming back? How come you don't want to be with me? Like, like. <laughs> well, because here's the thing, Skip. My G, like. Skip, here's the thing. I've been with you all day, every day for the last seven days. I just days. love you. But I like you. I like seeing your face. I just need to. I just like seeing you. Go be a man. You know what I'm saying? Not that I'm not a man with her, but like I just you can be let me <laughs> let me go drive around, like. Cause I like spending time by myself. I do like having alone time, but like I'd be worried sometimes that you that you're frustrated with me because I'm frustrating and I know that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know that I can be a pain in the way. <gasps> I can be a pain in the A. Uh, <laughs> in the arse. In the arse. I can be a pain in the anus. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so I know I'm annoying. I know that. And I know I'm bossy. Um, so I want you to have your time. But I also don't want you to feel like you can't be here. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I like having you here. But I also like time away too. I like both. I like both. It's a conflicting feeling. It's like, oh, can you leave? But then when you leave, you'll be like, oh, when is he getting back? <laughs> um, Calling me. Hey, where are you? And then I also like communication. <laughs> my, I like clarity. My, my lo we, our locations are on. You I always like clarity, know where I'm at. And so, like, sometimes you don't tell me where you're going or when you're going to be back. And, like, I need you sometimes. I like to ask questions. And I don't feel like texting you all the time. Like, I want to ask you a person. If stuff, if stuff ain't in the calendar, oh, I, I'm, <laughs> then I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> then don't tell me. Well, you need to put in the calendar when two you're minutes before I'm about to leave that you need me. I just need to know where you're gonna be at. Oh my god. Okay, anyways. Yeah, that's how the transition has been. <laughs> but I think overall we're doing pretty well. It hasn't been too stressful. Your anxiety is not that bad, right? I don't. I don't have anxiety. I mean, but there's been a couple times where you've had anxiety, and I'm like, yeah, we, wow, we're... Cam is nervous about. Well, me. because as a man. And when you have a traditional job, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't matter whether you have a good month or a bad month. Yeah, that's true. When you're on salary. You're don't getting matter. a check every two weeks. You're getting that check, whether whether you killed it in your performance or whether you did the bare minimum, you are getting a check. The entrepreneur life is, is entrepreneur life stressful. is bro. It really tests your faith. Welcome to my life. Like it really like a couple times. Like I was I was gonna go get me a job, bro. <laughs> I was hey, I'll be feeling like that sometimes too. I'll be like, man, maybe I should just get a regular job. To go get me a it's just, this little side because. hustle where I know every other week I'm gonna have money coming in. You know what I'm money saying? Money coming so. to me now, child. Listen, this has been my whole life, so I'm used to it. But it do be stressful now. I'm proud of you though. You have handled it pretty well, I think. I'm sticking it out every week. I have a thought though. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's the only thing is financially. It's just financials is always stressful because you're handling everything yourself. You know what I mean? Like, and, it's not, and we're not hurting. Don't like, don't. No, it's crazy. just, it's just the stress it's just of, different. it's just the stress of worrying about all of that. Like instead of, oh, I'm going to get a check in the mail. It's like, I'm going to get a check in the mail, but that check is coming from me. <laughs> like the check is coming from us. So it's going from one of our bank accounts to another bank account. We gotta make sure that one of those bank accounts always got money in it, so that the other bank account can get the money. It's so weird. It's like we're both the job and the employee. That is very stressful. 
Um, just because you just always want to make sure that we're okay, you know? So, um, but I, I appreciate Cam for being as, you know, open-minded as, he, as he's been. Because I know it can be a little stressful. And um, we've been, you know, just talking things through, trying to work together. Like, okay, this is what we got to do to get this money by tomorrow. And doing it. Cancer, what has been the most challenging year? I feel like it's still 2016. <laughs> I think that's still the most challenging. I don't Dang, think we've no topped change. that. I don't think we've topped that. I think every year after that has gotten a little easier. Somebody asked me if we've hit the sweet spot. I don't remember where they asked me that, but somebody asked me, have you hit the sweet spot? What does that even mean, first of all? How do you know? How do you know, though? Because you haven't experienced the years after, so how do I know the right. sweet spot isn't after this year? Um, but I will say, I think every year has gotten better since we've been married, so every year is the sweet spot for me. Every year after For me. Sweet, for me, it's, it's the sweet spot for me. I'm excited about you know, the future and all the things that we're going to get to do and get to experience and new things that we're going to, you know, get to share and whatever else God has in store for us. I guess like the one thing that I don't worry about is our relationship. Like I don't, yeah, especially, you know, me being a pastor and me dealing with, with people and you know people's issues like we all got issues not to say i'm this perfect person but yeah i i'm grateful that i can like have peace about my wife like i don't i don't gotta worry about the stuff that i see on social media and oh the, the relationship way, yeah, drama dating we don't have that now we don't that, have no like, drama now you live a very drama free I have, I have a i have an amazing great wife and I'm blessed in that manner. And so, you know, I just try to do as much as I possibly can to foster the kind of environment that an atmosphere that I want to have. Like, I, I do things to enhance that environment. So all my brothers out there, if you watching this with your wife, brother, hey, <laughs> listen, you, you have the ability to control the climate and the atmosphere in your household, dog. It's like you got the Nest thermostat, brother. <laughs> you have the controls. If you want your atmosphere to be hostile, keep doing things that make your wife hostile. If you have a peaceful household, keep doing things that foster peace in your household. And uh, yeah, so. That was that was a bar right there. That was a bar. That was a bar. Like I'm gonna have to steal that and post that like on my <laughs> Instagram. Hey. Yeah, look at that sex life. Does it get better? Girl, yes. Somebody asked, "What's the best?" Talk about that in the podcast. What's the best, best part about turning thirty, or how has turning thirty affected your marriage, and what's the best part? Like, I feel like the older we get, listen, he be doing some stuff. <laughs> Here, it's like know. you know new she doors new up, doors up, open control. you know what i'm saying every year a new door i feel like because cam is starting to feel like i was feeling about him when he turned 30 like he's he feeling that now like oh 30 nah, nah, ever, different. ever since she turned 30 she only got like a couple months like a month and a half under her belt and my god it's just really done <laughs> I don't know what it is about 30. He's done miraculous. The 30s, things. the 30s, my 30 friends, those are my friends who are my in the 30s. They told me. They prepared me mentally. They were like, "Girl, when you turn 30, it's different. Like the sex be crazy." And I'm like, "Really? We already kind of But man, like we be we be on another level. I'm on a new level. I'm on a new level. <laughs> I don't know. It's just what somebody getting older, man. I like, I like 30. I'm happy to be in my 30s right now. Like, I feel great. I feel like the stress of the world is off my shoulders. I just feel grown. I feel grown and sexy. That's how I feel. But uh, I like me. Do you like me? Cause I like, like me. me. <laughs> I think that's all we have to say. If you guys want more of this banter, if you want more of this back and forth, if you guys, we might answer some more of these questions in the podcast because we ran out of topics a lot. So we probably will answer some more of these questions in there. If you have more questions, you can ask them on the podcast. Guys, you can leave 
voice notes for us on the anchor page which will be linked down in the description box below and you guys can ask all the questions until your heart is content we will answer them on the podcast we just wanted to come back here and let you guys know one we're still married <laughs> two we still love each other it gets better every year we had a great year we're gonna have a great one this year it's already been great the couple months we've been in it and uh yeah that's it that's all we got for y'all Thank you guys for rocking with us this long. If you've been with us this long, we appreciate you. You smart, you loyal. Peace. This out of <laughs> this out of this out of preachers that be like in a in their mid forties, they still trying to be cool. Ew, they, they do do that. Like this, they do do that. Ugh. Gross. We can't. You can't be that kind of preacher when you get older. No, never. Please don't. Lay y'all. Be out.